What's up, guys? Welcome to Episode Cast, Two Martinis in Space, coming to you from the high top. My name is Benjamin, and this is my co-host, Roger. Hello. Hi, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really gotta, like, sit down and think about what to say Why? instead of that shit. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm Roger. Roger. What? Is this first grade? Uh, you know, oh, that reminds me. What? So, all right. This one time. Okay. <sighs> All right, first college. I first guess. college. First college. I apply. I get in. I had to write an essay. Mm. It was a really good essay. Good essay about a what was a journey, and I was like, well, metaphysics, blah blah blah, journey, blah blah blah, philosophy, yeah. blah blah. You got a D on it, right? May have been pretentious. No, it got me in. Oh, okay. I was into that school. Apparently, you didn't even have to write the essay. Dude, that's though. that's what American college is all about. Like, wow, this kid is pretentious as hell. <laughs> Let him in. Let him in. <laughs> He'll do fine. And that's why the science community is the way that it is. Is it is. As it is, is it something? Uh, pretentious? No, I don't know. I mean... I love me some Neil let's, deGrasse Tyson. Let's not hate on anyone yet. No. I don't hate anybody, guys. <clears throat> so here we are. I love first everybody day, equally. First day of college. I'm it wasn't perfect. a real... Will you just let me go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, so first day of college. It wasn't a real college class day. It was more of a, an intro day for freshmen. Yeah. So we go in to our majors classroom, mm-hmm. and mine was physics at the time, and I was like... Yeah, going to be an astrophysicist right. or a cosmologist. Of course. Look at stars is, all day. Dude, that's what I was going to school Spoiler for, Spoiler alert! They look at graphs all day. Yeah. Yeah. I found so, that out, So, shout out to anyone who wants to be one of those. I kind of still do. Be prepared for some disappointment, unless you learn about it more, and then you really dig it. Anyway, back to the story. So, uh, we're all in class, and there's like 20 of us, and we're all physics majors. We're all sitting next to each other. I'm in the back corner, because like, fuck school, am I right? Do drugs, kids. Mm. Uh, so, I'm in the back corner <laughs> shooting, up, shooting up some heroin, Yeah, and uh, I'm behind a yeah, very strategic placement. Behind a tall kid, obviously. Right. Because <laughs> that's where all heroin addicts live. Behind, behind, tall <laughs> behind the tall people. Yeah. So, uh, what's going on is we're doing this icebreaker thing. This teacher is like super Indian. So, I don't even know if he can understand what we're all saying to him. Oh. But he sure is smiling and nodding in approval. Wait, the, the teacher? Yeah. And that's the important part of the English language. Oh. As an American, smiling, nodding in approval. That's true. I would, you follow I would me. Be. Okay, so a lot of uh, facial things. We're going down. It's like, hi, my name is Jimmy, and I like to play soccer, and I like to follow sports, and I am in physics because I like triangles, like some shit like that. You okay, know? that's some like that's some rudimentary shit. Yeah. Uh, the next person that goes, let's say, after Jimmy likes those sports and yep. soccer's and stuff, uh, they are like, hello, uh, my name is uh, Neil. Oh, and were you in the same class as Neil deGrasse Tyson? <laughs> Did Neil deGrasse Tyson no, was no, he a no. freshman in college? Was he a freshman two years ago? <laughs> three years, ago. three years ago, three, four years ago. How old am I? I don't know, Roger. How old are you? I don't know. That's, anyway, that's a good so start. So they were like, "Oh, my name is Neil. Mm. I play the violin, mm. and I am a female to male transgender student." And I'm everyone's just like, "You play the violin." <laughs> That is incredibly interesting. Oh. We're just, we're, and then this girl next to me piped up. She's like, where do you even get a violin? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. All right, this is a weird moment. <laughs> like, don't dwell on this. Let's just move on to the next student, please. Please move on to the next student. Anyway, it's just super awkward the whole year. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that was interesting. That's a good... That's an interesting introduction. I almost wish my introduction was as interesting or less interesting but not quite there you know oh, what i'm true you know what i'm saying so you thought that was too interesting no sex change for me in the near future oh okay yeah that's oh, what i'm that's, you know, i feel you so you're confirmed. saying you're saying instead of saying hi i am roger you want to say hi i play the violin and i am... and i'm not getting a sex change oh, okay yeah that's where i was going with that oh. people people will think it's interesting mm-hmm. because i use these interesting words yeah. like sex change oh true. but and violin nothing's happening okay i don't even play the violin i lied about that it's a very good machiavellian tactic yeah also that's a good way to introduce yourself to hi my name is benjamin i am a, a high functioning machiavellian i will well, destroy just, you from the inside that out. just sounds spooky you gotta not yeah. do that i will how are you gonna make friends i will take your money i will marry your children and divorce them and make them depressed. this is why you hate children because you were a bad children i wasn't bad children actually <laughs> I was a great children. No, this you one weren't. time I rolled in dirt, swear to God. My mom was like, oh my God, Roger, you're so dirty, you need a bath. And I'm like, I'll show you. So I went outside, like found the nearest dirt pile and just like rubbed it on my face. And mm. I'm like, oh God, 
I hate myself right now. <laughs> Please give me a bath. <laughs> no, see, it. I was the opposite way. I hated being dirty as a kid. I was, I was a really weird. OCD I love kid. it. I, never, I love it to this I day. See, I would go outside, man, and like my friends, they would be like jumping in dirt piles, and I was like, uh, I was like uh, none of that for me. I'm please, going to. Please, I only jump in Prada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wear my cords. I'm gonna go to the <laughs> gonna gonna service my at my church <laughs> and sorry. talk to my local pastor That's about my life. Your pastor. <laughs> yeah. Get that pasteurized sermon. <laughs> I am I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to my local field. That and vegan ask him friendly questions. sermon. <laughs> I'm gonna go to a big green field full of cows and ask him questions. That's right. I mean, that's all you can do nowadays because who else is gonna answer mm. your damn questions? People are so, you know, they just ignore everyone they meet nowadays. They right. talk to him for like two seconds, and be like, eh, judgment but, is passed. But people are so busy. Is that validated? Are people busy? Uh, they think they're busy. People are busy with what they want to do. I know a p- several people that are very busy. I was very busy, mm-hmm. you know, a month or two ago. Yeah. I was like, I was going to school 40 hours a week, yep. and I was working 29 hours a week. Yep. That is a busy week. I do not wish that I mean, upon that's, anyone. That's like more hours than there are in a week. 69? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. No. At any rate, I don't wish that upon anyone. If anyone out there is working 69 hours a week plus... God, God. 69 hours a week of being a porn star, am I right? <laughs> Godspeed to the... No. Porn's bad. Okay, true. Stop that. <laughs> it is bad. I agree. Man, I wish people knew that. No, I agree with you. Hmm. I do. I think it's, it's very drunk. Why do you think it's bad? Oh, because, okay, here's the thing, guys. Controversial topic ahead, right? All right, so this is going to challenge... Controversial topic ahead. This may challenge our current viewers... Because we're going to have so many, you know, they're just going to be such from such a wide demographic. Yeah. We're, we're ready. Like, we're going to encompass some people. I don't know. I th- I think that maybe, I think that pornography violates uh, more, like, you know, good ethics. Good ethics. I do. But what is good ethics? Well, let me just say this. I think pornography is unethical. Okay. That's a better way of saying what I just said. Yeah. No, I, I, would, I would agree. There's something about it that is just too spooky for me <laughs> i mean that's... i'm i'm the doctor shoes of ethics in case you're wondering <laughs> oh dr seuss dr seuss okay going on the line of pornography and on the line of dr seuss this is a spooky this spooky is line we're trying amazing to... tie together that just right. okay so we're going my try. mother's a librarian right and i was talking to her the hold other on day. hold on now i heard that you have to get a degree to be a librarian not true not true. Well, I well I know some librarians that are like, oh, they're like upper class skilled intelligence wise. Like, oh yeah, I mean if you're a librarian, you obviously you kind of have to books. know everything. Yeah. Also, yeah. because you've read everything. Right. But you remember it. I mean, my mother reads a lot of books. True. Uh, however, a lot of them are fiction. <clears throat> but she's very well rounded. That doesn't talk. mean she knows fake knowledge. <laughs> Just like fake knowledge. It's all like there I, is. I know the math of the Tolkien universe. It is definitely not one plus one equals two. Mm, no, that is not There's true. One, one plus, plus one, one equals Gandalf. Yeah. And and the one ring that's what it equals yeah. and so it, that, i think it matters what you're adding in the tolkien universe you could be adding gandalfs or rings mm. different outcomes so a man time. goes to a store and he buys 35 gandalfs and he spins two of them right how many saurons and then he goes home and talks to his three rings how many saurons are on the roof yeah and that's a perfectly logical tolkien question it is that's actually in the appendices yeah and the fun part you know in it's the, like challenge yourself yeah you um, i heard the similar sim, similar Similarity. Similarity. Similarian. Similar? Similar. No, how do you say it? What are you talking about? The similarian. 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 Yeah, the, the, I heard that the book Silmarillion. Is, I heard that Silmarillion. book. Silmarillion. I heard that book is dry as shit. No, say it with me. Silmarillion. No. <laughs> you didn't say it right. I'm not going to say shit. No, that book is great. I've um, read it twice. You're incriminating me. It's a great book, guys. I feel invaded. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying about Dr. Seuss, right. my mother's a librarian. She comes home and she's like, yo, check this out, dog. Like, I'm at the library today and I'm looking up Dr. Seuss books for the kids. And I'm like, yo, does mom. She, does she speak like a grown black man? Uh, Yeah, she... I feel like I've met her and she must have been dotting a true personality because she spoke like a grown <laughs> white woman. <laughs> this, is how I, this is how I see the world. You see, Kantian, you know, Kant will tell you, you know, that... There are two different worlds that are out there. There are things in and of themselves, and then there's the world as we perceive it. And I perceive my mother as a grown black man. But she so, is, in fact, not a grown black man. You, Wait, yeah. hold on. That's Does she just, actually say that? So he's saying you perceive things in a certain way, but they are in themselves in their own certain way? I mean, you can't say for certain. So as far as you know, we might be driving cars around, and we perceive them as cars, we when in reality they might be beavers. But they are cars. 
We might be driving beavers. But they're placeholders is what they are, and that yeah, they're, perfectly makes sense. I mean, sense. they're cars to us, so that's fine. But anyway, I, I perceive my mother dude, as a Dude, hold platform. on. What? Hold on. I watched this movie. Shout out to this movie. Mm. Zombiever. Oh, yeah. You're right. <clears throat> it's a bee movie. I know that. Have you seen it? It's a beaver movie. God. <laughs> it's a bee movie. <laughs> yeah. It's a bee movie. And I've seen a lot. I don't, wanna, I, don't wanna say, I don't want to say a lot. I would just want to say several. I've seen, I tried to watch. Sharknado. No. Classic. I, no, what's that one where the pigeons attack? Birds. Birdemic. <clears throat> that movie was not even worth watching for fun. I would have had been so drunk as to not remember it to have enjoyed watching it. Mm. That made sense. Yep. And I have also watched uh, Paul Bunyan, Axe Murderer. Oh, wow. That Quality. actually sounds pretty good. <clears throat> it's terrible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched Black Sheep. Heard, heard that's hmm. good. I haven't heard of that. Evil one. Sheep, you know? Anyway, point oh, being, yep. Zombiever, quality B movie. Like, the acting was really good. The writing was terrible, but it was supposed to be terrible. But the acting was, it was rich. Mm. It was funny. The, the, the zombie beavers, spoiler alert, there's zombie beavers. <laughs> you I didn't... mean, I, I wouldn't have guessed. <clears throat> I know. The average, the average viewer I would have no idea there were even beavers in that movie. Mm. Could have just been a nickname for the lake they were at. That's true. Zombie beaver. Yeah. Things have weird nicknames. Beaver Creek. Things have weird names. They yeah. do have weird there names. There could be zero beavers. Speaking of weird names and Creeks. speaking of pornography and Dr. Seuss, this is going to blow your mind, right? Oh, yeah. We so never I, finished the story about yeah. your mom. So my mom, she comes home, she's like, yo, dog, I got this book for the children. And I'm like, yeah, mom. And then she's like, okay, dog, here's what we got. I'm looking at Dr. Seuss books. Does your mom say dog as much as I hope she says dog? No. Oh. I've never said dog in her life. Fuck. Uh, doesn't even like dogs, <laughs> except for the dog that we own, which is a. Ugh. And so. She's like, yo, dog, like, this is the books that we got with Dr. Seuss. And she, like, shows me this shows me this book. And it's this book that Dr. Seuss wrote back in the day. And it's called... Was a, it before he was Dr. Seuss? Yeah. Yeah. And it's called okay. A Pocket Book of Boners. Yeah, I've heard about these yeah. books, actually. Yeah, it's so called... So tell me about it. Do you read right. it? No. Well, is I know, it a bunch of dick pics? I, no, and not at all. So, like, oh. I guess back in the day, a boner was some sort of joke. Yeah! Yeah. Oh, man. And so you had... There were the, Can it was, you imagine? It was the pocketbook of boners. It was divided into four sections. Boners. Boners. More boners. Hard-ons. Still more boners. <laughs> and erections. <laughs> no. And then, so you got, you got boners, more boners, still more boners, and then the last book, prize boners. Prize boners. Yeah. And so, like, my dad's, like, obviously, like, I got the prize boner. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't even get that dad joke. Oh, that's that's like that's like a dad joke of such dad. Dude, but know. here's here's what I was thinking. All right, if boner used to mean joke, how would you feel if you were the first man to have your erect penis be called a joke? <laughs> I mean, well, I don't think that. No, wow. I don't think that's how it worked. I, I think, think that's what happened. I don't think you were like, I have a boner, and then someone was like, a boner should be called another word for joke. And then you're like, did he just call my dick a joke? I don't think that's what happened. I no, think dude. That, I think, I I think, think there was a classy a classy 1950s woman, right? And she's, you know, Marilyn Monroe. Boner. <laughs> yeah. And she, this guy, like, takes his pants off. She's like, oh, darling, you you have such a boner. What? <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, oh. And then, bam. You know, like, in the newspapers, in movies, <laughs> boner is now colloquial. For this is the dumbest marriage. thing we've ever discussed. Is it? I think so. Oh. We're at the level of rock bottom, but we had to hit it eventually. I mean, was that worse than Krampus was Pope? That was a quality conversation. Don't you dare hate on that conversation. Mm. The, okay. people, the people will love it. The people will love it. You don't think that it is... Okay, you're right. No, I think it was quality. It was mildly... You're right. Penises are immature. Mildly knowledgeable. Dick jokes are not my fashion. Mm. You, know? you know, they're not mine either. But I, I, I thought it interesting of, a, of amusing... Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a level of joke that we don't experience to this day. Yeah. We don't hear because it wasn't. It boners. wasn't even meant to be a joke. That's what. Like, that's what the joke. Oh was. God! What if that word was interchangeable and like someone told a really lame joke and you're like, "Haha, that was a dad boner." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Roger. Dick oh, jokes God. aren't my thing. No, dad dicks. <laughs> no, I regret it. I regret saying the thought out loud. This happens every time. I gotta stop talking. <laughs> this podcast was a terrible idea for me. All I do is say dumb shit. Nah, dude, it's where you get your stuff out. So personal philosophies, right? Personal philosophies. Roger, what Wait. philosophies do you live by? 
What do you consider yourself to be? If you had to like label yourself as a certain type of person, what kind of person are you? In my second year of college, I did a report that was over everybody's head in that class. Mm. And it was on the three main types of ethics. Uh, there was Kantian ethics, utilitarian yep. ethics, mm -hmm. and virtue ethics. Okay. And I originally thought myself to be a Kantian ethicist. Hmm. I would consider myself to be utilitarian. Really? Yeah. I, you know, at first, I think people are quick to dismiss that as like, blah. Like utilitarian? Yeah, no, I, th I, th I think, think it, a lot of people dismiss that. I do too. I think it has a negative connotation with it for yeah. no reason. Well, I think there's pretty valid <laughs> okay, reasons. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me back up. It. Let me back up for yeah. the, the, for only certain reasons that people look at, and then there are many other reasons why it's great. It's very easy to polarize that idea. Now, see, utilitarian can only become bad whenever the means is like not a good means, like whenever the utility yeah. is not ethical. Itself. Yeah, but if it's like good versus more good people are all over that yeah shit. exactly and that's what i've like you know like whatever outcome produces the most good for the most people is the right one you know if the, your utility is goodness and that's okay but if your utility is whatever produces the most money not so great mm, but it's just <clears throat> i think it left, leaves a lot of room uh for definition yeah by the individual and i don't like that I don't like that either. I think Kantian ethics, you know, cuts back on that. They yeah, the, the, the universal maxims. maxims. Yeah, and I think virtue ethics definitely cuts back on that by talking about the golden mean and talking about a virtuous, the the hell is circular thinking that Aristotle's like a virtuous man is virtuous. Like, thanks Aristotle, you're really helping me do my report. <laughs> a virtue is a man, and a man is virtuous. Yeah. I Thanks. am Aristotle. God, that was Aristotle a, spelled backwards as Aristotle. That was a tough presentation, but I did have this interesting story. Yeah. And I'll tell you it, because mm. it was a good story. Right. Um, uh, I'm going to struggle to remember it, but there were several people on a boat, and, and they, they got gonna, stranded in the ocean. They're going to switch boats. No. Oh. They, they, they were just them on a lifeboat. Their boat had crashed, but they were the last survivors. Yeah. I think there were three. Okay. And they were like, hey, we should all draw straws. One guy was like, hey, we should all draw straws to see uh, who gets eaten. Because obviously, we're not going to live for much longer. We need to eat one of us. Mm. And one guy was like, no, no, no. And well, the, the main guy was like, well, hey, if everybody can't agree, well, then fuck it. Because we can't do that. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Anyway, one of the guys starts to get sick. Hmm. And uh, the other guy's like, well, this is a great moment to uh, eat him. Oh. So they stab him. Oh, eat my God. Him. Is this a real thing? This is a real story. Oh, wow. This is And then, dark. like, seven days later, they get rescued. Oh, man. Dude, so rough. Uh, anyway, they were tried for murder. So. Because they murdered a man. So what, 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 what's the, so is he a utilitarian? The takeaway here is that, like, you can apply these different ethics, types of ethics, to what the outcome could have been. Like, hmm. uh, utilitarian, yes, definitely would have, would have done that. Kantian? Well, you know, I guess that's why the deontologist take on it would always be against anything that's non-virtuous. Yeah. Because, like, the thing with consequentialism, it's great. Like, okay, you know, we can do something that's, you know, a little bit risque here in order to have a good ending here, but you mm -hmm. can't know the future. Yeah. So I guess that's the issue with consequentialism. Yeah, which, you know, I've always liked. I've always liked you can't know the future, therefore you shouldn't rely on something that's such a huge variable to justify your current actions. Mm. Like, that is a risky, risky move. Uh, that's so you, you consider yourself a, a Kantian ethicist? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, but part of me, part of me really, really likes that. I like it too. I think the universal maxims are great. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think system. yeah. Before making a tough ethical decision, we were talking about these things like these people know what they are. Oh, that's fine. Okay, let's ex <laughs> let's explain universal maxims really. Well. <clears throat> okay, universalizable maxims. Uh, universalizability was a Kant was a, was a Kantian term that I first heard and was like, he's an idiot. But Immanuel he's... Kant. Immanuel Kant. Yep. Yeah. K A N T. And, um... <laughs> Not. I know. We know. Okay. Anyway, so he said basically that if you are going to do or take an ethical decision, you should first apply that decision to everyone in the world. Say, mm -hmm. if everyone in the world made the decision you made, would the world be a better place? And if he said, and if it was, then you could do that. And then if it was not, you could not do that. Mm -hmm. uh, utilitarianism is basically weighing the good in the situation versus the bad in the situation. If you, that's like, really the best situation for this is when you have a room full of people and a baby starts crying and you're like in the Nazi era and you need to smother the baby so you all live mm -hmm. or let the baby cry so you all die. Yeah. And you got to smother the baby. Right. That's what the utilitarian <laughs> That's would what the say. utilitarian would say. The deontologists, the Kantian ethics 
would say, no, you can never ever do that because then you can allow everyone else in the world to make that same decision on a whim. Mm-hmm. Virtue ethics is a lot spookier. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Right. Uh, it kind of goes, man, it's just hard to explain. It is hard to explain. So we're just going to graze over that and say, fuck it. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that. All right. So which do you consider yourself? Virtue ethics. Virtue ethics. Gra- but you're not going to tell people gra- what that means. The crazy one. <laughs> okay, you're saying, I'm virtue ethics. I I'm don't a- know what that means. That's- no, I know what that means. It's just hard to explain. It was hard to explain to my class. It's hard to explain here. Well, just just give, give me the simplest, like, t- tell me in a sentence what Basically, virtue ethics is. Basically, in that boat situation, All right. the virtue ethicist would have said to himself, what would a virtuous man do in this situation? And he would have realized that he has never been in this situation. He has yeah. never practiced for that situation. Therefore, it is a tough decision. So a virtue ethicist would say that make the best decision that you can in the moment. Yes. And that's as far as it goes. And a virtue ethicist could have made either decision just as easy, I believe. Okay, well, that's, fair. that's fair. The goal in virtue ethics is to find the middle ground in traits. So mm. if you have a trait of honesty versus lying, we talked about this on the last podcast, didn't we? Yeah, uh, which one? Like honesty versus lying. If you're constantly truthful, you're just a stream of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. If you're lying, you're hurting everyone around you and yourself. Right. So you got to find this. He called it the golden mean. Uh, of to, like uh, omitting information and then also giving information. Yeah. Like never to lie, but to omit things that would be not beneficial. Unnecessary. Yeah. Right. So, this boat. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, let, let's say let's say this. You're you're in a situation where you're on this boat, and you you this guy's sick, and you. Oh my God! Maybe they can tell us. Who? The people listening. Oh, they can. If someone was listening to this podcast, hopefully, uh, they could tell us, and hopefully justify, why they would make the decision they made. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's go off to this, right? I, um. Hmm. I guess I would consider myself to be a utilitarian, I guess, overall. Why is that? How can you justify that on so many levels? I think virtue ethics is super easy, easily justified. And I'm not saying it's the easy way out. I'm just saying it's the right way out. Hmm. Yeah. But you're saying that utilitarianism is not the right way out? I'm saying you could kill a lot of people and something in the future could happen. That, yeah. That you hadn't intended, and now what you've done is killed a lot of people, and it's had a bad outcome. I mean, but that that's the worst possible outcome, and that's a slippery slope argument. No. Yeah. No, it's are. a probability no, argument. No, no, no. That is a slippery <laughs> slope argument. Listen here. Because here, here's, All how, right. <laughs> here's how a slippery slope <laughs> argument works, right? So you're, 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 gonna you're basically saying like... On the like, slippery slope fallacy. Yes, I am. I know it's a fallacy. Okay. But it works. <laughs> good man. You're a good politician. Yes. I'm a politician. Good Welcome. at media. Welcome to America. And uh, so uh, how do you feel about stoicism, right? So like you have people, you have the Greeks, and this is where stoicism came from. came from the <clears throat> Hellenistic period. This one girl I dated in high school. Was a stoic? She thought she was for like two weeks. Oh, okay. That's and I was like, you're being real unemotional for these two weeks. <laughs> Okay, that's not how stoicism works. Are you sure? Yeah, because right. she was into it. No, dude. Okay, she that... read like Remy. Yeah, I know, but that she is getting the wrong things out of stoicism. Do you know who I'm talking about? I I don't know who you're talking about, but I assume that he's a guy that wrote all about stoicism and being non-emotional. You think I dated a guy? Remy. Oh, you're talking about Remy? Yes. <laughs> I was wondering if you knew how I was talking about. I dated. You dated Remy. I did not date a Remy. So Roger dated Remy. I learned dated a, a lot man. about stoicism. I dated a man for two weeks. Yeah, and he was, and he very, was emotionless. very unemotional, very okay, unemotional. Okay, so tell me about stoicism. All right, so stoicism basically derived from the Hellenistic period whenever the Greeks were being hunted down and killed. Uh, I think this was during the time of Assyria. Not too sure. So Greeks being hunted and killed, bad news. Uh, basically, tragedy is a part of your everyday life. You have people that you love being executed and raped and burned and, you know, whatever, you know, having their eyes gouged out and their heads cut, cut off and stuck on spikes everywhere. Oh. Yep. So, <laughs> and then they're being sold into slavery on top of that. So you have Greek people, and out of this time, there came a lot of philosophies on how to deal with uh, trauma and emotion, right? Stoicism was one of these ones. So you have optimism came out of this era. I want to stop you here and interject that if stoicism is anything like Buddhism, <laughs> Buddhism. 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 I study the booty right. with calm eyes. You know that that's, and no emotion. that's how you deal with your emotion, right? You yeah, just you, you go you think the about booty. the booty, right? Yeah. I, I many a time in my relationship mm. have I had woes. 
Right. And there's one way to battle woes. The booty. That never fails. What if the booty is denied you, though? booty system. The what booty never denies. You're denied the booty. If you're denied the booty, then the relationship is over. And then you have no booty. <laughs> you must become a booty cyst. <laughs> a booty is a cyst. Anyway, Buddhism versus Stoicism. Mm, okay. What's the difference? Uh, I, you know, I'm going to compare the two. Honestly, I don't know a lot about Buddhism, so I can't tell you. You know, you probably know more about Buddhism than I do. I tried to take an East Asian civilization college, okay college. all right so let's let's compare here so okay. this is a very greek thing the stoics i forgot all my knowledge all right that's fine Me it too. wasn't important that's why i gotta be you know i'm just i am outsourcing my information from a source that i have read about and Please then long forgotten the huffington post huh? shout out to the huffington post for being shit <laughs> <laughs> go there and search why do you suck <laughs> best question not a sponsor they won't have an answer we have we will never be sponsored by them fuck them that's right. why <laughs> Also, IFL science. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, God. Don't go there. Okay. So, Stoics, basically, you know, they, they had, there were a lot of different things that came out of this era on dealing with emotions and dealing with trauma. And the Stoic basically said, like, Stoicism at its core is about acceptance, right? So, you're like, these are the cards that you're dealt. This is in accordance That sounds to nature. lazy as shit. I'm just going to interject though? and say whatever I feel like. But continue. Is it lazy? Okay, here's the thing, though. Is it actually lazy to accept the cards that you're given rather than to, like, selfishly fight against them and, like, throw tantrums that life isn't going the way that you want it to go? I feel like it's lazy either way. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so You are doomed to be lazy. People are lazy, right? Yeah. So th I mean, that's, that's, that's humans for it. It is. It's the Greeks. The Greeks were very lazy people, Fuck. and so whenever they were being captured and enslaved, and they were all orders. they said was, they said, screw it, guys. Uh, this, is, this is how things are. Uh, let's just do it. Mm-hmm greeks that's stoicism um that's you know you wrote a paper on that too that's everything yeah no never written a paper on stoicism no. but what have you written a paper on oh uh, well let's like, see. think about all the weird things we had to write papers on in high school let's see. one time I oh wrote... dude the first okay let's, let's think about this the first paper i ever wrote was first on, was on scott wrote. joplin dude my first paper i what the hell that's the first day I remember writing. I gotta Let stop me and that. say who the hell is Scott Joplin? Dude, Scott Joplin, the father of ragtime music as we know it. Uh, uh, African American pianist in the 1920s. Very good. Uh, is that what your paper said? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, he wrote The Entertainer, I'm pretty sure. That. You know what I'm talking about? Hopefully, someone will know. Otherwise, this is just humming. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, my first paper was about my vacation to Adventureland. Way more <laughs> dank than some jazz timer, dude. Okay, dude, no one's more dank than, than jazz timers. That's the thing, though. Jazz is the freshest music. I think dank contradicts that thing. Nah, dude. Dank means moist. Yeah, dude. That, there's nothing more moist than the reed of a used saxophone. <laughs> That is a dank reed, man. Dank reeds. That's what they're saying back then. <laughs> Do you think they compliment each other? Like, bro, I can't get my reed as dank as yours. Nah, dude. You got people. You got bleed. Help me out. I'm got... stressing, man. <laughs> okay. We're going to play improv games. You should do this on the show. Improv games, right? We're going to play how dank. Awesome. All right. Funny <laughs> jazz artist names. Ready? All right. Uh, B Bleeding Gums Pete. <laughs> dank scissor hands. I don't know. This game is stupid. <laughs> I hate this game. No, dude, it's good. It's good. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's break time. Okay, it's break time, guys. It's break time. Uh, uh, Dank Scissor Hands is out. Dank Scissor Hands. I like it. I mean, it's modern. Uh, yeah, like postmodern. Postmodern. We better break. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, guys, we're back on the cell. Okay. Is it going to jump in the beginning? What? Is it going to jump? In what do you mean it's going to jump? I like the audio. Where did my hammer go? He's been playing with his weird nut hammer. Damn it. I honestly don't even know why we had it. Where did it. I go? Oh, it's right here. He used to have another roommate, and he moved out. Mm. But he was always pickling. <laughs> he was always pickling stuff. I'm convinced that's his hammer. Uh, killed him with a hammer. No. He just cracked a lot of nuts with that hammer. Mm, true. Well, guys, during the break, we got a phone call. Did we? We got a phone call. We sure did. From Hollywood. Hollywood called us, and they were like, fuck. We're suing you. Those dick jokes were too funny. They did. They said, you monopolized comedy. You monopolized dick jokes. You did. Wait, no, we don't want to do that. So we give it back to Hollywood. Mon we did. We Hollywood has a monopoly you know, on dick jokes. We said, you, you, you're fair, Hollywood. Uh, we tried it out. 
Sorry we did better than you, but uh, we're, we're done with it now. We're done with it. You can we, have it back. We have transcended dick jokes. We have transcended Hollywood, guys. Here we on. We're, we're on to clock jokes. Let's be honest, guys. What is Hollywood? <laughs> dick jokes. That's it. That's all they are. What is... What is Hollywood? Hollywood? It's... it's oh, a, no, no, no. It's a section of yeah. Los Angeles. Oh, okay. We're going geography here. You got me beat. I don't know. I, I mean, I was there. I, I mean, you know... I was there recently. You know what's funny? I used to know all the capitals, to all the states, and I was, like, real cool. <laughs> oh, wow. That's like, cool, I, wore a leather, I wore a leather jacket. Oh, yeah. And I was, like... And you had, like, a button from every capital That capital, on your West jacket. Virginia, is Rochester. Like, <laughs> the capital? <laughs> yeah, Rochester, New York. And, well... No, it's Richmond. I honestly, here we are. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. School is New York City not the capital of New York? No, it's really? uh, it's uh, Albany actually. Now here's my question. Wait, what is Rochester then? Is uh, that a capital? No, it's just Ooh, a city. Guys, uh, I, I think real Richmond. Dumb right about now, Richmond is the capital, of West Virginia. <laughs> okay, I don't we remember. should stop pretending uh, to know things. I don't even but, know the capital of the state that I live in. It's Jefferson City, right? It's Jefferson City. That's... We live in Kentucky. <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> um. <clears throat> anyway, I think Fred Quares. Anyway. Oh, okay. What you know? You know how in like if you w- take math a math class, usually they'll offer offer a cumulative test. Not offer. You got to take it. But you have to <laughs> We're take. We're gonna it. offer this mandatory test. Hey, do you want this test? No, girl. Well, you're no. taking it, dog. Right now. Anyway. Sit down. Shut up. Take a pencil. Were teachers that mean to you? Yeah. Is that why you dropped out? Uh, See, so yeah, I went to college, and the first thing I did, I said, Hi, I'm Benjamin. I'm here to learn. They said, Hey, why don't you just shut up and stop talking to me with your stupid face, sit down, and do this paper, but I doubt you'll pass anyway. Like, that's, hardcore. That's the how they bone. were. They were hardcore. Did they teachers. have leather jackets on? Uh, No, not leather jackets. Did they chant to a They were actually <laughs> they were wearing untanned animal hides. Oh, my God. Yeah, they were like Vikings. Vicious. They dude. came in. I was. They were speaking Nordic to me. Fucking savage. They were. I tell you. Yeah. Teachers wearing leather hides. Untanned. Untanned. I honestly don't know what that means. They also had untanned skin. But you know what untanned reminds me of? It reminds me of... Myself? Uh, <clears throat> no. Well, that's funny. That's, he's ginger. <laughs> Heads up. Spoiler alert. Ooh. <clears throat> when I was in welding school, we had to watch a video on this Viking sword called Ulfbert. Oh, yeah, I know about you it. You know about it, yeah. yeah. We talked about it, I think. Yeah, because like the, the, it was the first measure of copyright infringement, right? In case you didn't hear that correctly, I watched a video on sword making while in welding school. No, I don't know why. Because you're going to weld swords, obviously. That's I, how swords are forged. You don't you, hammer them anymore. You weld a sword out. I have forged metal in have my you, car, you actually. you weld swords? No, but mm. I could make a knife out of that forged metal if I heated it to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit and then cooled it slowly and then shaped it and then heated it back to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit and dipped it in oil. There we go. Roger reciting all the information that he learned like a perfect robot just the way they want him. Well, but it's good. I know Perfect. why, though. I know why, though. That's you know the difference. exactly why. That's the difference because when you and that's why Roger is a co-host on an educational, uh, on a non-educational there recreational you go. podcast. There you go, princess. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get pretentious here. We're not educating nobody. <clears throat> I mean, are you sure? Uh, I mean, people probably know some things that they probably didn't but, know, but they probably don't know them in a useful way. You know, this is kind of the argument of like video games. Oh, uh, maybe. You know, you are gaining new knowledge, different knowledge okay. than you've been previously known. Maybe it is good for you. Expand okay. your mind. So, for example, what what? A, okay, we we both love the game Holly Miami. True. This is a good video game. It is an excellent game. In case you not guys... only is it a good video game, but it's a great video game. It is. In, in case you guys <laughs> don't know, like Hotline Miami is 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 an indie developed game for the. Shout PC. out to Hotline Miami. To, to Devolver Digital. <laughs> Is that their yeah. name? Yeah. No, it's Denitin Games, isn't it? Oh, Denitin. Yeah, yeah. Denitin Games. They, they, they did awesome. I mean, so this game is basically like a, a late 80s, sort of early 90s themed, mm-hmm. like neon, drug-induced, just killing spree, hyper-violent, top-down shooter. And it's awesome. Like, you just... Like, no game makes you feel this way. So basically, you're, you're a character, you put on an animal mask, and you get a phone call to, like, go to a certain location, and you go into the buildings, and you just clear them out, kill yeah, everybody. Yeah, so it's basically, like, uh, hit, you're basically a hitman, mm-hmm. but instead of killing one person, you kill, like, buildings full of people. Yeah, with, like, and the melee weapons. Like, you're hitting people with baseball bats. The and, game doesn't explain any of this. I mean, it kind of does. It Real slowly, but the whole thing of the game is to make you forget there is a story. Right. That's The whole point of this game is to make you dismiss 
the questions. What you're doing. Uh, dismiss the questions. Why are you killing people? Why it are you is. doing this? I Who's think calling? Because you get in there, you have this crazy 80s soundtrack, right? Yeah. It's just like oh, this bumping it electronic. It is bumping. It's so good. If you guys have not heard the Hotline Miami soundtrack, listen to it because it's no, amazing. No, you got to play it. You play the game. Play the game first, then listen to the soundtrack yeah. alone. But the thing that's interesting is like while you're playing the game, right? You're playing the game yeah. and the music's bumping. You're like running yeah. through. You're stringing together kills. You're like racking up those high scores. Dog, you get combos. Yeah, you're getting combos. All about like the kill combos. combos. Like you're yeah. killing three people with one swing of a baseball bat, and True. it feels better than nothing. And then you throw a shotgun at another guy coming around the corner. Yeah. You kill that dog with a bat, and it's just like it's intense. Bam! And then you realize, wow, there's one guy I haven't killed yet, and he's like leaning against the wall trying to get up. You run over, mm-hmm. and you kick his head, and it explodes. Except, and then there's that one guy who you forgot about, and he shoots you through the glass. Yeah. And God. Damn, but here's the you thing. You were so far in that like, level. Now you gotta start over. So you jump and you do it again. You're like stringing together these kills better than before. You're axing people in half. You're throwing knives, throwing bricks, shooting people with shotguns through glass windows, like shooting computers off desks. And then like after you kill everybody in just this like really quick sequence string of violence, like the music stops. It's yeah. It the stops. music it stops. Oh yeah, it does. And it, it does. goes to like that weird. And, like, and you have like this. Like this is just ambient, like visceral humming sound. While you walk back to your car. And you have to walk out of the building, like down past all the floors. Everyone. Past all the bodies. And then you're like sitting there realizing like, whoa. Yeah, the music stopped. The the craziness has stopped. And now it's just quiet. You're walking past all these dead bodies and you're just hopping in your car. It's interesting. It's a strange feeling. Like the game evokes into a strange feeling because you, like you feel like that. That you've like experienced what a psychotic rage must feel like. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're in the heat of the moment. You have no idea what's going on, and then like after that, you're looking at the aftermath and like yeah. forced to like walk through the aftermath of what Honestly, you did. Dude, gives me chills. Yeah. So good. What a good game. What a great game. And so, what do we learn from it? <clears throat> that um, you should not lose yourself in the moment. You should always maintain a rational mind, mm. or at least attempt. You know, the more you can recognize the situation you're in and how it's affecting your thoughts you're having, the more hopefully you can you know pull yourself outside of that situation and be able to. Be a good observer. Because mm. a lot of times, you know, judgment's clouded. People die. People make mistakes. Well, people die. That was a far jump. I'm yeah, sorry. Say, I've been in that situation <laughs> many times. I've, yeah, many people. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just not, I'm not observing properly. Next thing I know, there's Next like th- dead people everywhere. Yeah. Like Dead wow. sunglasses. You know, yeah. Dead watches. Dead watches. Yeah. Dead, dead, dead go-karts. Dead cult members. Fucking sheets, man. I swear to God, they just die on you. Mm. You can't it's bring true. them back. You just, they just go. <laughs> No, nah, dude. Hotline Miami was good. Hotline Miami was Have great. Have you played Hotline Miami too? Yeah. Difficult as shit. It was a lot more difficult. A lot, a lot more difficult. Uh, it's in. It's amazing how much more difficult it is. Did you like it better? Didn't think it was fair. I still haven't beaten it all the way. Me neither. Real close though. Me too. I, I picked it up again because I had my roommate mm. uh, play the first one, and he and he dug it. But it was funny to watch him also forget that you know he had those questions because yeah. he'd be like three levels in. And then, you know, it gets to a questioning scene again, and he's like, oh. He's like, wait, what's happening? I forgot about this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I forgot this was a game where I was supposed to ask questions. Cause yeah, because you're just killing people. Man, it is great. But, man, the psychology of that, it's just so interesting. You know you know what, another game that's kind of interesting that way? Hmm. The Binding of Isaac. Yeah? That's an interesting game. I feel like you're just a little kid who was abused by your mom, and now you're throwing your tears at spiders. You are, but you're playing this game, and you have no idea what's going on. You're like in a basement, and you're a naked child, and mm-hmm. you're crying at monsters to kill them, right? You're crying your tears on monsters. That's kind of a weird... I don't think I've ever like been like, I'm sad, Psst. like, and like right. nailed anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so like, props to him. Props to Isaac. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's really a, really a, you know adept at crying, True. allegedly. And you, you're walking through, and you're picking up items like stigmata, which is like, you know, like a... <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> like a crucifix. You're picking yeah. up items like cancer. And you're, you're, you're fighting bosses, you know, that are tumors, and you're killing fetuses. Tumors, you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there actually is a, a, a boss called teratoma, <laughs> and it's just a hairy tumor. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No! And, so, and, then, there, and then you're waiting. You're waiting through just piles <clears throat> of... Of, of poop right and then you're like what is going on in this game waiting is a weird word because it's like it sounds like waiting mm. but when you wade through something it's generally because you don't want to wait in that thing so it's like i don't want to wait i want to wait so here's a question you if, if you're at a if you're at a restaurant and you're waiting on your food does that mean that you're the waiter does that mean you are, in fact, swimming through piles of feces? No, 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 no. Think, oh, think about this, my Roger. bad. Think no, about no, this. no. I do. I follow you. Okay. I've seen it. 
Are I've you, seen that question. You're a are waiter. you the waiter? Are you the waiter? No. Okay. I think like I, I guess the answer is that. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, mate. <laughs> the fuck, mate. Yeah. You're having a giggle. <laughs> Man, there no. are some good internet memes. There are some good internet. And memes. then you know what happens to those good you internet? You what, mate? You know what happens to those good internet memes? They, they the internet ruins them. It's true. Unfunny people think they can make funny jokes. Or funny people think they can make a dozen jokes, and it just doesn't work. Like, let's talk about the new Star Wars. You've seen the TR eight R memes, right? Yeah. I fucking hate them. Yeah. I hate them because that guy wasn't even important in the film to me. I don't know if it's just it's like a weird internet. Crush. Yeah, I don't know. He was he was cool. <clears throat> like he had a cool spinny Le- arm. But thing. logically, did not make sense. Why would stormtroopers have a b- weapon that could block lightsabers if they in fact knew the Jedi were already instinct for almost twenty years? Raised like what twenty? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the only so, thing that you could ever think about is like... Unless he was going to ha- rebel! Yeah, or, or, or you're just thinking that like, okay, this weapon that tr- that traitor, you know, is wielding, just, you know, maybe it's used for a different purpose, but it just happens to block lightsabers no, at the same time. that's bullshit. Other than that, Star Wars Top Notch. <laughs> yeah, Top Notch movie. Yeah, top Notch movie. Go see it if Eight you haven't out of ten. seen it. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Solid. By and that's Isaac? not a B. Let's see. That's Hotline Miami, ten out of ten game. I give it a... I give it a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yeah. All right. I don't think anyone anything's been perfect for me. I think that's unattainable. I can. I think oh, if I ever met a perfect video game, I would still be playing it instead of talking. Okay. Well, here's the thing. All right. Hot Miami. Mean, I'll knock it down to a nine out of ten because. Whoa. Hey, you can do that. That's cheating. I will. I okay, will fine. because it, I mean it has a little bit of randomness to it, but the replayability, like the game, will stop being. You know, you'll 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 know everything there's. You to get know. it. Yeah. Right. So Binding of Isaac. I still give it a 10 out of 10 because, like, there's so many items in the game. <clears throat> there's so many different rooms. There's so many different enemies. All right, I feel. It's I feel. extremely replayable. I have logged, like, over 200-some hours, and I, yeah. if, I'm i still just experiencing new things all the I time. I just find it so funny when people are just so quick to judge things and give them, like, an 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, when, in fact, I don't think they understand what that, that uh, implies, you know? That implies a game that is just so groundbreakingly good, mm-hmm. like... The only game, the only game to me that's really, really close to ten out of ten, probably Halo Three and Mass Effect Two. You ever played Mass Effect? I've never played Mass Effect, but I've played a lot of Halo Three. Mass Effect One is like super RPG, and it's almost so RPG that it was overwhelming for me. Mm. Apparently, I don't like RPGs. Little do I know, my RPG buddy was like, "You don't like RPGs." (laughs) No, you don't. Don't. Don't take that. Like RPGs I, are the best games. I out had there. to take that because apparently I don't like them. No, no, no. RPGs are the best games out there, and you need to experience more before you can draw that conclusion. I, Bethesda games. I top really, notch RPGs. Really want to play them. You gotta play. You, you play Bethesda games. Get uh, them on your computer and just change the field of view. I'm trying. All right, guys. So here's the weird thing about Roger. Is no, don't talk about it. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Roger says that the field of view. I'm a little bitch. <laughs> the feel of you no, on no, Bethesda no, the games. Up, Basically, what happens is uh, Bethesda games just give me motion sickness. Other games have done it to me too. I remember God of War one on the PS2 gave me motion sickness, and Portal would sometimes give me motion sickness. I can, uh, I can understand Portal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, no, it wasn't just Portal because it was Portal. It was also Half Life. Mm. It's just the way their field of view works. Like, I could play Halo 3 all day. I could play Call of Duty all day. God, I certainly wouldn't, let's be honest. I could play... <laughs> <laughs> I could play... I mean, what are some other first-person games that are popular? Uh, specifically first-person. Specifically first, yeah. first-person? Yeah. What would you say already? Actually, it doesn't have to be first-person. It's mean, just Halo. any camera view. Any game. What are some any games, specifically? <laughs> uh, you got Mario. Uh, yeah, racing games usually don't make me sick. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. It's something about the field of view, apparently... What about Grand Theft Auto? Sometimes. Really? Yeah, sometimes. Apparently in, like, standard games, let's say Payday or Halo 3. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Payday's the one I've played all day. Yeah. That Uh, doesn't give you motion sickness? Nope. There's a lot of leaning and stuff in Payday. Yeah. No. Leaning. Yeah. Like, when you pick up the bag and the screen tilts diagonal. Yeah, I don't know. It's the field of view. It's not the way the screen is orientated. Huh, that's interesting. Uh, apparently in Bethesda games, it is around 90 degrees. 85 yeah. to 90 degrees. I think it's 85. And in regular games, it is 100 to 110 degrees. Is that true? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, we can Google it right now. We have the power of the internet. Eh. Eh. Who needs to use that God. kind of thing? You know, it's funny. I 
I see a lot of things where people are like, oh my god, these people are on their phones all the time. Like, can you really hate them? No. Okay, here's the thing, guys. They have the okay, no we have, the universe. We have smartphones, guys. All right, smartphones, how crazy is this? It is a device you hold in your hand, and it's so incredible that with the touch of your fingers on a buttonless screen, it can navigate you through the entire collective knowledge of the entire humankind. I mean, sometimes it costs and money. People get, well, yes, yep. but people get mad at you. For being on this thing, looking at the entire collective knowledge of humankind. Because fuck them. That's why. <laughs> that's my motto. There you go. Because fuck them. <laughs> that's why. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Like, you're you're on the train and you're on your phone and you're looking up on the newest, you know, You know how database. stocks are doing. Right. You're looking at how, stocks. What, what's the new science discovery of the week? Yeah, you know, you're looking at CERN's new particle a... they just discovered that will define yeah. the way that yeah. you know quantum physics is looked at for the rest of time. People are like, you're on your phone too You much. antisocial bastard. Yeah, and you're like, fuck them. No, you don't even say it to them. You don't say you don't say fuck you. You say fuck them because you're not even paying attention. Yeah. To also, you. but let's 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 not blame people. No. Even though... Well, just, like I said with the strokes, just because you blame somebody doesn't mean that you hate them. Yeah, okay, so it's it's a principle. It's the principle that we have this polarized idea where people should be allowed to be on their phones all the time or shouldn't be allowed to be on their phones all and the time. And they should be, obviously. They Well, not all the time, though. I mean... Not all the time. Let's let's think right, realistically. You're at, you're at a you're at a funeral? Uh, no. Not yeah. the time, not there, the time. There's a time for respect, and there's a time for courteous. There's a time for giving some something or somebody your undivided attention, and yes. then there's times whenever you can remove that, you know... It's like, uh, you, words don't, are hard. you don't daydream when you're having a conversation with your lover. I mean, I do. Unless you should leave that lover. Okay. <laughs> Ice! Cold! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. That was brutal. That was so brutal. Oh, should we cut that? Oh, I don't know, man. Oh, I, I, they might feel that heat over hot. their earphones. Diggity might damn. burn their ears. God, have you? Do people burn their eardrums? Uh, wow. Can you imagine? All right, here's here's Can what you imagine I imagine that pain. Here's the thought that I had. Uh, I'm gonna insert a blowtorch into your ear and then turn it on. <sighs> Um, the in that would be the strangest pain ever. I don't think people are, can easily imagine the would that pain kill you? Of the yeah, the inside of your skull would melt if you yeah. stuck it in my ear. Yeah, so close. I to mean, the just brain. for a second. So close to the brain. Yeah, very. Close. I mean, kill part of it. That's for sure, right? I mean, I don't know, man. People have their brains. Touched There's got to the be time. a temperature at which cells die. There's got to be a max temperature, right? Yeah, because like, because what, get, what is burning? You know, you, whenever you get you, sunburn, whenever you burn yeah. something, you're changing its chemical composition, so like things turn to ashes. Yeah. So uh, whatever a, whatever state something dies. Yeah, you that know. is a chemical change, and a lot of people think like a lot of things are chemical changes, but a lot of things are not. That's just some science for you folks. A lot of things might be. Wow, they, I think I they just, might not be as well. <laughs> I just I think I just understand something very important now. Ready? <laughs> Okay. I th okay. You're, this is gonna sound crazy. Try me, man. I think that the reason that My Chemical Romance <laughs> named their band that is because his rom his romantic life is always changing, like oh. chemicals. But it's not changing in a superficial physical sense. It's like changing if on someone the molecular was changing level. the physical property, it, it is changing on the molecular yeah. level. On the molecular level. <laughs> a, a chemically changing relationship. Oh my God. Guys, you know what the craziest thing in the world is? Your cells are replaced completely yeah, every eight years. every eight years. That you is are. a... That You're is a different a person every eight years. Think about yourself eight years ago. Who were you? You're probably no thinking, I was the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> That's right. Because you're not that person anymore. You can say that. You can say, I was. Should you say that, though? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's, I think it's okay to admit self-defeat, but to self-deprecate? I mean... That's different. You're allowing insecurities to take the better of you. Is man. defeat defecation? Yes. Is defeat defecation? No, stop. No. Maybe? Mm. Apparently when you die. Oh. What I've heard. <laughs> I hope that is not a fact because I plan, I plan to go in my sleep. Okay. Like, so... I don't want my wife to wake up and be like, God, fuck. I mean, that's just part of dying, man. I mean, no! look, the stoic here would say it, that's the way that nature is. The stoic here would say, just plug your nose. <laughs> No, no, the plug your nose and turn away. Not even plug your nose. Not, don't even try to change it. That's what have we degraded ourselves to? What Toilet mean? humor? What? Ah. No, of course not. You... <laughs> right, dad boners is way better. <laughs> <laughs> One step above. Dad dicks. I'm not <laughs> I don't make dick jokes. I just make exceptions, you know. Right, you know, that's, it's the virtue ethics. It is true. That's what virtue ethics are telling you. You say, so, <sighs> sometimes I would stab the man in the boat, other times I make dad dick jokes. Yeah. 
And I don't stab the man in the boat. You forgot part B of that of that solution, Ben. I think that's a very important part of that philosophical idea. You know what I'm saying? Which reminds me. When was the first time you had a computer when you were a kid? What was it? What? When was like your first computer experience? Oh, I was very young. Uh, I was like, I was, I, me- I remember, let's see. I was four years old. Um, that was the first time I played Halo. Yeah? Yeah. Was it a pirated copy? Uh, no. Four years old? Halo CE? Man, yeah. savage. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Dog, that's what I started on. I, when I, I remember getting my first computer, I must have been in like fourth grade? I wasn't my computer. That was no. my first computer experience. Oh, I was just saying, my first computer, you're right, I'm not even answering the damn question I asked, Ben. <laughs> Fuck it, that's why. <laughs> oh, and, true. And uh, I had my first computer experience, no, I had my first computer in fifth or sixth grade. Right. I made the most cash money myspace account mm. tell you what dude dude my it was space. one of those that would like crash your computer yeah if you tried to go on it right because you get so much on there oh yeah like cursor changes like background changes music that would play automatically that you couldn't find the pause button for yeah dude. hell yeah so wanted like, everyone to hear my emo oh, shit <laughs> yeah of course like people log on your thing and like it starts playing emo stuff your cursor's turning into pentagrams <laughs> and your computer starts to playing displaying an airman it's like yeah. warning too dank <laughs> i don't think that's what it said in 2004 <laughs> no, what was 2004? What was the thing back then? Too sick? I don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah, sick, sick is good. Man, I remember this kid. He had the coolest gelled hair. <laughs> okay. His name. All right, we'll I don't know. I think I know his no whole name. Should I say it? Oh, I mean, sure. Why not? I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. It might have been Kyle Kawasaki. <laughs> Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. No! He was in Nebraska. In Nebraska? Yeah. Dude, I feel like I knew a guy that was named Kyle Wasagi that had spiked gel hair with no. blonde highlights. I know. Like blonde tips. I know when spiked. I said gelled, he thought spiked. Laid to his head. No. He gelled it really? and he was like... Dude. Right down. Not the same Kyle. I'm pretty sure there's a kid named Kyle, right? Yeah. And he had he had, like, he had gelled hair, but it was in spikes. You know, like This that. was like fringe. You okay. Know? But yeah. it was like... I was like... God. Like, have you ever seen uh, a Xenon or Xena... Whatever it's the called. The Warrior Princess? It, the Space no. the Space Girl. It's a Disney The Warrior movie. Princess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's no. like there's there's the I'm guy not... you know, there's the pop artist on the on the show and he has like spiked hair and, and it has Warhol? blonde tips. What? No, that's not it. I don't remember. He said pop artist, all I can think of. That's all he, that's who he was. He was a pop artist and really like, Oh man, it's so sexy. He's like this like yeah, dude. tan guy with dark the eyebrows. The only pop and artist hair. I remember was Chip Skylark. Oh, my shiny teeth dude, and me, dude. There you go. When I was a kid, I would sing that on the bus to myself to pass the time because I was a lonely bastard. You know what? How how good of a show for lonely kids? Yeah, was but uh, I did parents. I didn't sing it like sing it like a weirdo. No, I just, no, no, like in your head, in like hum head. it. Yeah. You know, like no. How good of a show for lonely kids was fairly, fairly odd parents? parents, dude. So good. Great it was show. like, hey, we know you're alone and you don't have many great friends right. because the friends you do have are kind of shit tier. They are. Yeah, but you got these... Uh, because here's the, th- here's the thing. Here's the sole problem, right? Yeah. I, I relate to Timmy, right? Okay. Because... Oh, my God. Can you make wishes? Yes. You maybe could have, but we won't remember that's how the show worked. Oh, true. What a shit, what a shit like, loophole. Uh, not really. No. Hey, yeah, when you grow up, you won't remember having a good time at all. This will actually be entirely pointless. I think if you don't remember something... Then it's That not completely worth it. invalidates it. Dude, what a... Well, um, I don't remember a lot of things, though. Well, I don't think that invalidates it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I'm saying is, like, if you are doing something super fun and enjoyable, but you so this know is like that, a totally subjective. This experience. is so a like, circumstantial. So thing. You're, you're saying that, like, okay, let's say that you donate, uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to someone that really needs but it. We don't remember. And you don't remember it. Well, that's fine because uh, don't remember it. Utilitarianism. Oh, true. I think it's black and white. I was gonna say that. I was going to counteract my own argument with oh. saying that if you get super <laughs> drunk and don't remember what you did, does it invalidate your actions? Yes. No. Yeah, no. No, it does not. So okay. that's where my argument So here's apart. the thing. So was Timmy actually drunk the whole time? <laughs> Timmy was drunk for like eight seasons. Yeah. And th- see, that's the thing, guys, is like the, the thing that's relatable about Timmy is that kids are awful. I hate children. <laughs> and Timmy had no friends because he was he was a, he had an old soul. I like kids sometimes. They are really, Do you, though? Yeah, they can really keep up with the uh, like the daydreaming that I have. Oh, you know, you know that that's a good... I like mean, the imagination time, aspect is good, but yeah, what if you have kids that don't have an imagination? Or what if they have False. an overwriting of imagination? I think all kids uh, have imaginations, and they can only be... It's damaged. programmed out. Yeah, yeah. they can only I be damaged. I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. Thank you, society. Did this one time in art class... Oh, my God, it was the hardest art class. In, like, sixth grade, they mm-hmm. were like, draw this... 
the three D picture. <laughs> Green like, is not a creative color. Green is not a creative color. I can't draw this. <laughs> Dude, I had an art teacher. And art she sucks. She spanked a kid. Oh, like, like full like on. in an artful way. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's this spank, Steven? <laughs> A heavy lisp that you really counteracted by just making snake noises. <laughs> right. She, she was, was like she was, sat in chair and slow there like Right. And she was like always topless and then like people would get her in trouble and they'd be like they'd be like, <laughs> they'd be like Miss Miss Evans, let's say. Miss like, Evans. Like Miss Evans, you can't you can't be topless like around kids and she's like, It's art. <laughs> it's art. It's art that's right and they're like oh wow we wouldn't understand we're not artists <laughs> and then there she was she was topless spanking children what a mess what the hell have you constructed in your imagination all maybe sorts it is of good horrible things you maybe know, it is good that imaginations get taken away <laughs> at like the age of 14 here's the thing guys my imagination not taken away <laughs> what do i think about weird shit yeah here we go here we go what was i talking about earlier how about how like it, the most expensive car crash you could ever get into Oh yeah, if okay, so if you were in a Mazda MX-5, which yeah. I want to buy. A Mazda MX-5. We'll keep you updated if I buy this Mazda or not, mm. because it could be a life-changing decision. Mazda yeah. is a 96 MX-5, mm-hmm. uh, low miles, <laughs> high miles, 170K. But I mean, that's not terrible. I mean, if anyone knows anything about MX-5, that's good 96, for a 96. 96 MX-5s. Let us know. Feel free to chat me. Go to audible.com. Go to audible.com. Search uh, Krampus takes over Poland. And uh, uh, Go ahead and type in topless art teacher. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> we regret that. <laughs> I'm regretting that from Ben. I don't regret it. Anyway. <laughs> Not at all. It's anyway. Funny. Yeah. If a Mazda MX-5's transmission exploded while you were driving next to a limo mm-hmm. that was filled to the brim with bottles of Cristal. Right. You know, crates. Crates of crystal, crates right? Of crystal. Because here, here's the thing, guys. Whenever you're transporting crystal by the crate, you know, here's the thing. You, crystal does not belong in a dirty truck with cobwebs in the corners. That's not where crystal comes from. Crystal comes from the bosom of of the lady champagne herself, right? This is correct. And that's where it comes from. Yeah. She she milks it right into those bottles, and from those bottles, it goes into the the, the highest tier wood. So they go, they find wood. Of tree species that are nearly endangered, that are endangered, and they they specifically cut down the trees. Like, oh, redwoods. Th- these crates are made of redwoods because they're rare and expensive. Fuck are yeah. Are redwoods endangered? I don't know. Oh. Um, okay. So they have redwood crates, and they come from the bosom of of Lady Champagne herself, and then they're transported not by truck, but by limousine. Because truck would. Uh, you know, the hydraulics. They'd have to pay extra to modify a truck for that. It's just much better if they take it in something that's designed to transport people instead of boxes of paper i don't know what the fuck box yeah. trucks carry i mean here's what you got to ask yourself are trucks. you going to take are you going to take the the, the 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 queen of sweden and are you going to put her in a truck are you going to put her in a crate and move her in a truck no you're going to put her in a nice crate and you're going to move her in a nice limo that's what you do yeah that's how you move royalty mm-hmm. by the way guys if you ever need to know in a sizable crate in a limo. Yeah. But don't drive next to an MX-5 because the transmission will explode. So here's the thing, guys. Yeah. We're talking about pros and cons, and Roger's like, well, what happens if I buy this car? And I said, well, here's here's where it will cost money. You know, your transmission goes out. Your car explodes right next to this limousine driver. Guess who's the driver of that limousine? Richard Branson. Oh, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Doesn't he own a lot of Airlines. stuff? Airlines. I thought he owned, like, an island, too. Yeah. Yeah, Virgin Airline. He I've also seen his owns house. The, he, oh, owns, like... he owns the Virgin Isles. God, is he secretly super virgin and uh, he's just like very sad about it? No, nah, dude, here's the thing. He's, he's in denial. He's like, he's, I'm make everything virgin. He has a monopoly on... So I don't on, have to be the only virgin. No, he has a monopoly on virginity. Oh. Richard Branson owns virgin. Oh my God. He does. He owns virginity. So... It's his. Your virginity belongs to Branson. You gotta lose it. He'll take it from you. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> this got too weird. This has gotta go. And it's an, gotta he'll, end. He'll take it from you in, this an, is art, over. in an artful way. This is the... It's art. We have to end it. See you guys.